The process begins with the receipt of an email. As soon as the email is received, a robot is automatically triggered to save the attached files into a designated folder. In the lower lane, the robot and AI work together to structure the files that were saved in the folder. Meanwhile, in the upper lane, another robot extracts information from an Excel file containing the details of the construction work subject to estimation. This extracted information is then passed to the agent. Based on the extracted data and the know-how inherited from experienced employees, the agent identifies the appropriate primary and secondary categories. Next, using the digitized invoice line item data, the agent performs standardization and normalization based on the secondary categories it has generated. This task also follows the traditional practices of the company, passed down from experienced team members. Once this process is complete, the agent sends a confirmation request to a human reviewer. This is done through a chatbot, enabling two-way communication between human and system. The confirmation details, sent from UiPath Maestro, are displayed via a chatbot-based AI agent. These details reflect the results of the standardization and normalization performed by the agent. Upon review, the first row is found to contain an error. The human reviewer inputs corrections and explains the reason for the mistake. This information is not only used to ensure the accuracy of downstream processing in the short term, but also serves as valuable training data to make the agent smarter over time. Once the human review is completed, it triggers the restart of the paused process. From there, the system proceeds to update the database to further enhance the agent's capabilities and initiates the core processing, including the creation of comparison tables. If certain business rules are met, the agent will autonomously decide which vendor to place an order with, fully closing the loop from data extraction to decision-making. Welcome. Today we're doing a deep dive into something uh, really quite revolutionary, I think. It's about how one organization managed to take this, you know, irreplaceable know-how from just one single expert mm -hmm. and actually multiply it, mm -hmm. turning a huge bottleneck into, well, a real breakthrough. We're looking at a specific case, yep. right, from procurement. That's right, procurement. And it's, you know, it's that classic challenge, isn't it, where you're totally reliant on one person's unique knowledge, their specific experience. Yeah. But what's really interesting here, I think, is seeing how technology can go beyond just like automating simple tasks. It can actually start to learn and apply that really valuable tacit knowledge. Tacit yeah, knowledge. You mean the stuff that's not written down, the intuition. Exactly. That unspoken, intuitive understanding you only get from, well, years of doing the job. It's not in any manual. Right. So imagine you're facing this ticking clock. This expert with decades of wisdom is about to walk out the door. How on earth do you bottle that lightning, that gut instinct? Mm. So today, we're not just talking about efficiency games, though those are impressive. We're really diving into uh, almost like a real world alchemy how they turned this irreplaceable human genius into something scalable, something digital. It's fascinating stuff. Yeah, get ready for some, I think, pretty profound insights into how the future of work is, well, it's already here, shaping things right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's first, uh, let's paint the picture. What did this process look like before the big change? You mentioned procurement. They needed to standardize and categorize supplier quotes. For comparison. Yes, exactly. All supplier quotes, so they could do a proper side-by-side -side comparison. Sounds, I don't know, straightforward. Maybe a bit tedious, but straightforward. You'd think so. Yeah. But what's really intriguing is that while the goal, the end point was clear, the path to get there was uh, deeply human hmm. and highly specialized. Ah. See, at this organization, they had this significant challenge. Only one expert, just one person, really had the necessary knowledge to create these absolutely critical pricing and technical evaluation tables. Just one person. It's just one. Let's let's call her Sarah for simplicity. And the problem was Sarah was getting close to retirement. Okay, so you've got a classic single point of failure, a knowledge island, basically. How bad was the bottleneck? Was it really slowing things down? Oh, substantially, yeah. The existing manual process was described as, well, incredibly slow. It was 
causing significant delays right across the procurement operations. Wow. Just picture Sarah's day. First, she's checking emails, right, for all the incoming quotes. Then she might need to request supplier names, just clarifying things, making sure everything's identified properly. Standard stuff so far. Right. Then, the meticulous part, preparing these working tables. But here's where her specific expertise, her uh, magic, as you put it, really came in. Okay. The crucial step. Setting the appropriate major and sub items based purely on the content of the quote. Ah, so interpreting the supplier's language. Exactly. This step, it required intuition, know how, years of experience. Mm. Like, uh, say a quote came in Company A quoted 5,000 for Gizmo unit under the major category electronics. Sarah would just know instantly, okay, from past experience, Gizmo unit really should be grouped under circuit boards. That's how they'd always categorize similar things, even if the supplier used slightly different words. Got it. So it wasn't just data entry, it was context. Understanding the organization's internal logic, its taxonomy, and mapping the supplier's terms to that. Precisely. And then came the next step, standardizing those sub-items, which also needed her veteran's eye to place every single line item into just the right category. Definitely not just data entry then. It's, uh, it's judgment. Nuanced judgment built up over years. Right. And only after all that complex, intricate human work could they finally create the comparison table, the pivot table they needed. Which uh, raises the really big question, doesn't it? How do you possibly capture that kind of nuanced experience-based judgment before Sarah, well, before she just walks out the door with it? That is the million-dollar question. How do you stop that knowledge from leaving? So how do they tackle it? How do they bridge that gap? You mentioned technology earlier. This is where the AI agent comes in. This is exactly where it gets really interesting. The solution was an AI agent specifically designed to uh, inherit, essentially, the past expertise and those judgment patterns from veteran professionals like Sarah. Inherit the expertise. Oh, okay. So it's doing more than just automating repetitive tasks. Oh, much more. This agent isn't just ticking boxes. It's designed to absorb ambiguous language, variations in terminology, you know, all the messy real world stuff in those quotes, mm. and then output clean, structured data in a reusable format that the business operations can actually use. It's fundamentally designed to understand the intent behind the words, just like Sarah did. That sounds incredibly sophisticated. Yeah. So, okay, instead of Sarah manually interpreting, say, Company A proposes 5,000 yen for module XYZ main item and interface component sub item, mm -hmm. the, the agent analyzes that, extracts the main and sub items itself. Correct. But how does it learn those subtleties, the gizmo unit versus circuit board things? Yeah. It just fed tons of old data, or was it more complex? How do you capture that intuition? It's a, it's a combination, really. The agent performs something called name normalization. It uses historical data. Yes, loads of it. Okay. So if sub items are ambiguous or they have different ways of being written, like widget X in one quote, WDGX in another, the agent learns how to unify them to see they're the same thing. Right. Makes sense. And it goes further. It can estimate the relationship between main and sub items using what we call expert knowledge modeling. It learns rules like, okay, for this type of work, the sub item interface component is typically part of the main item module XYZ. It learns Sarah's logic. Wow. And crucially, it provides its reasoning. It doesn't just spit out an answer. Ah, transparency. That's important. Hugely important. It might say something like, in three past cases, gizmo unit was interpreted as circuit boards. So the human user can see why it made that decision. So it's not a black box. You can actually follow its thinking. Yeah. That must be key for getting people to trust it, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when replacing someone like Sarah. Absolutely crucial for trust and for verification. And yes, it handles the really tricky stuff too. Like what? Well, like if there are multiple possible sub items it could map to, it can unify them under the most appropriate name based on the evidence. It can describe their relationships with the other possibilities. And importantly, it even knows when it's uncertain. Oh. Yeah, it can flag when normalization is tricky and offer a tentative suggestion, basically saying, here's my best guess, but maybe a human should double check this one. So it's like a digital apprentice. Learning from Sarah, but also knowing its own limits. That's a great way to put it, a digital apprentice. It really makes you think, doesn't it? <laughs> about all those hidden pockets of expertise in our own organizations. Mm -hmm. People like Sarah holding things together. What happens if that knowledge isn't shared or, like here, captured? Mm -hmm. Scary thought for many places. So turn to the impact then. With this agent, this digital apprentice in place, how did the whole procurement process actually change? What does the new workflow look like day-to-day -day compared to Sarah's manual grind? 
it's a it's a fundamental reengineering of the process, a complete overhaul. Okay. So instead of Sarah doing all those manual human intensive steps, checking email, preparing tables, interpreting items, robots and the AI agent take over a lot of that heavy lifting. Robots too. Yes. Step one, R1 we could call it. A robot retrieves the email attachments, the quotes, and stores them automatically. Right. R2. Another robot gets triggered. R3. This robot uses uh, sophisticated document understanding tools like UiPath document understanding in this case to digitize the invoices and extract the key data points. So it reads the document. Exactly. Then the AI agent steps in. A4. The agent proposes the appropriate main and sub items using all that learned knowledge. Ah. A5. It normalizes the details, standardizing the terminology. Just like Sarah did, but automated. Precisely. And finally, R6. Another robot takes that clean structured data and creates the comparison table automatically. Wow. So where do the humans fit in now? Is Sarah or her successor just watching robots? Not quite. Humans are still very much involved, but their role shifts dramatically. That final comparison table. It goes to a human for verification. Uh... The human in the loop. Exactly. But here's the clever part. That verification step isn't just checking the output. It also acts as refined training data for the agent. Oh, interesting. So the humans are constantly teaching and improving the agent. Correct. It means Sarah's knowledge isn't just captured once. It's continuously refined, updated, and scaled across the whole operation through this feedback loop. So the system keeps getting smarter. That addresses the issue of things changing over time, too. New products, new supplier terms. Mm -hmm. Were there any uh, any hiccups in getting the team to actually trust this new system? I mean, replacing such a relied-upon expert, even with transparency, must have felt like a big leap. That's always a valid concern, isn't it? Change management is key. But I think the design really helped here. The transparency, showing the reasoning, and keeping that human verification step built trust. And the results probably helped, too. Oh, definitely. The results spoke for themselves. This shift, this re-engineering, it led to some really profound benefits. Get this. The total lead time per case. Remember Sarah's process. Yeah, it, days. It went from an average of three days down to just two hours. Sorry, did you say hours? From three days? Two hours. That's roughly a 97% reduction in lead time. Wow. Okay. That is genuinely astonishing. Yeah. 97%. And what about the actual human effort? The man hours? per case. Similar story. They saw about a 90% reduction there. It went from roughly one full person day of work per case. Sarah's entire day sometimes. Right. Down to just 0.1 person days, a tenth of the time. That's just an incredible boost in efficiency. So beyond the raw speed and save time, what did this mean for the organization? You know, bigger picture. Well, several things. Firstly, much expanded data availability. Now they had clean, standardized data flowing consistently, which allowed them to actually do data-driven operations, make faster, much more informed decisions based on real numbers. Right. Unlock strategic value from the data. Exactly. And perhaps most importantly, the elimination of that critical dependency on one individual worker. Sarah's invaluable knowledge her expertise is now an enduring asset for the entire organization. Mm -hmm. It's codified, scalable, and continuously improving. It's not just in her head anymore. That security must be huge. Her retirement isn't a crisis anymore. It's a transition. Precisely. This whole deep dive, it really highlights how powerful it can be when you meticulously analyze and then strategically automate processes that rely on that deep, sometimes unspoken, human knowledge. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's not really about replacing people, is it? It's more about augmenting our capabilities, making sure that critical expertise isn't just lost when someone leaves, but actually leveraged and scaled up across the whole enterprise. I think that's exactly right. And if you connect this to the sort of the broader implications, it really suggests that almost any complex experience-driven task, I mean, think about medical diagnosis, legal analysis, complex engineering design, could potentially be analyzed, codified, and have aspects transferred to an AI agent like this. It frees up the human experts, the Sarahs of the world, for the higher level strategic thinking, the innovation, the complex problem solving, the human connection stuff that machines can't do. It really makes you pause and think, doesn't it? Listening to this, what stands out to you, maybe think about the unique knowledge you have, or perhaps that one indispensable person on your team, the one who seems to hold all the keys. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows someone like that. Could their expertise also be captured somehow, scaled? Could it transform an entire operation like it did here? It definitely raises an important question for all of us, I think. What other areas of your work, maybe even parts of your daily life, 
might benefit from this kind of really deep dive into the process and thinking about how knowledge is actually transferred or lost. Yeah.